Asa Blizzard 240 is a liquid CPU cooler that uses a 240mm radiator and has plenty of RGB to satisfy the current demand for colors and showing off. However, this CPU cooler is competing with all of the big names in the industry, as it is priced at 80 US dollars, right in the middle of the price range for such a CPU cooler. The question remains though, can this 240mm cooler handle its competition? The Aza Blizzard 240 is your regular all-in-one liquid CPU cooler that has plenty of RGB and I mean plenty. The CPU water block has plenty of RGB on the top while the fans are illuminated from all sides giving a smooth color and light emission. The Blizzard 240 has a price of 80 US dollars, however that will vary based on your region. As I've seen this CPU cooler go for higher or for lower, thus your mileage will vary greatly. As I've previously stated, the Blizzard 240 uses a regular 240mm radiator made from aluminum with a regular fin layout and density. One feature that this radiator has is an air bleed port installed on the same side as the tubing. What this port does is simple, it is used to service the entire loop of the CPU cooler and to bleed out any air trapped in. However, there is one issue with this port. If you decide to service the cooler yourself and use this port, then you will void your warranty. This is not an issue with this CPU cooler, it's not an issue at all in fact. This is why every single manufacturer has a label on these bleeding ports, because servicing them with these bleeding ports may lead to leakages if you don't know what you're doing. The CPU water block is simple in its shape and it has round edges with a flat top plate. As always, this water block is full of RGB but somehow it doesn't look tacky at all. You have the Aza name and logo at the front with the ring of light on the edges. And all of them are illuminated by the same RGB system, thus keeping a uniform color and light pattern. The base plate of the Blizzard 240 is made from solid copper and has a smooth surface with a linear brushed texture. This base plate is not as good as what Noctua or Be Quiet can offer, but it's good enough for such a CPU cooler. Unfortunately, this base plate is attached to the pump and block assembly with no less than 10 torque screws. This adds more issues with the contact on the CPU as it can create pockets of air in the thermal compound. The tubes used on this CPU cooler have a total length of 400mm and are covered by thick synthetic woven sleeving. On the radiator side the fittings are simple, while on the CPU water block side the fittings are angled at 90 degrees and can swivel to make installing and using the CPU cooler easier. The fans used by the Blizzard 240 are the newer Aza Hurricane 3 digital RGB fans, sporting a new impeller design and a maximum speed of 1800 rpm. These fans use addressable RGB LEDs to illuminate and can be synchronized with the rest of the RGB system to maintain a color and light symmetry. However, much like other Aza fans, these new models have their set of weird design choices, one of them being the lack of rubber pads on just one side of the fan frame. The pads are installed on the back side but not on the front, which is all well and good if you have the fans installed on the front side of the radiator, but if you want them in a push-pull configuration, well with these fans one set of the fans will sit on the radiator with padding while the other side will sit with no padding at all. The Blizzard 240 has the same issues that a lot of RGB CPU coolers have. It has too many cables for its own good. The water block has two cables, one for the RGB and one for powering the pump. Each of the two fans has two cables as well, with multiple RGB connectors. This adds up to no less than six different cables and no less than eight connectors. Also, to add easel to injury, none of these cables and wires are sleeved and some of them are quite stiff to use. In terms of the accessories, this CPU cooler has everything you need to install it and use it, and that's it. You get a backplate, mounting bars for AMD sockets, mounting bars for Intel sockets, two thumb screws, four mounting bar screws, two sets of four studs for the backplate, a tube of thermal compound, and eight long screws to install the fans on the radiator, with another eight small screws to install the radiator in the case. The installation procedure could have been simple and easy, but it isn't thanks to one massive oversight. You first install the required mounting arms on the CPU water block and secure them with these small screws. Afterwards, you get the backplate, adjust the yellow pieces for your socket, and then place the backplate at the back of the motherboard. You have to hold it there with one of your hands, while with your other three hands, somehow apply the thermal compound on the CPU surface, place the CPU water block on the CPU, and then align the mounting arms with the backplate so that you can install these long studs. All this while keeping in place both the backplate and the CPU block. 
If that wasn't hard enough, this mounting system has no way of regulating the pressure on the CPU. So basically there is nothing that will stop you from either over tightening the water block on the CPU surface or having an uneven mount on the backplate. All these issues could have been solved by using longer studs that are pre-installed on the backplate which then would secure the water block on the CPU with some spring-loaded screws. Unfortunately we have the total opposite of that. With everything installed, the Blizzard 240 looks great, it has plenty of RGB but it's not really tacky and will match any system and configuration. The RGB is easy to set up as it will work with any RGB software and system offered by the modable manufacturers. If you don't use such a system, you can always just use an external RGB controller with the remote. Before we get into the testing of the CPU cooler, you will get to hear two sound samples of the pumps and fans. I am doing this because while the decibel value is useful for comparison and to get a general idea of how quiet or noisy is the CPU cooler, this metric does not really showcase the complete picture as a lot of unwanted noises such as bearing ticking, vibrations and more are left undetected. With the pump running at its maximum rated speed of 2600 RPM, you will hear it, and you cannot lower the speed of the pump, not unless you are using a voltage-based controller. However, many water pumps will not work good with a lower voltage, hence why many, this one included, are using a simple 3-pin connector for power. With two 120mm fans running at their maximum speed of 1800 RPM, the ASA Blizzard 240 reached a maximum noise output of 48 decibels, with the measuring device placed at a standard distance of 10 cm from the CPU cooler and the testing system. This makes the ASA Blizzard 240 the loudest CPU cooler in our graphs, and that's unfortunate as those fans are not really spinning that fast to generate this level of noise output. For testing all CPU coolers, an Intel i9-9900K CPU is used. Used. The CPU is running at both its factory frequency and settings and it is afterwards overclocked manually to 5 GHz on all cores. The ambient temperature is set at 26 degrees Celsius through the entire testing period. The first test uses the Intel Pentest V2 benchmark, a synthetic benchmark that is easy to use and has reliable results. In addition, this benchmark places a load on the CPU which is similar with what you can get by playing a modern AAA video game. And in this test, the ASA Blizzard 240 reached a maximum temperature of 60 degrees Celsius with the CPU overclocked to 5 GHz on all cores. This places the Blizzard 240 next to coolers such as the Noctua NH-D15S or the Tech EOS 240W. However, the next test is where each CPU cooler is pushed to its limits, some even beyond that, as this test uses the system stability test of the AIDA64 Extreme software. While this benchmark is reliable, it will place a load on the CPU which is so high that it is basically unrealistically high, something which you will never encounter in your daily usage. In fact, the only CPU load that even comes close to this is doing heavy video rendering with the CPU as the only rendering unit. And in this test, the ASA Blizzard 240 reached a maximum temperature of 88 degrees Celsius with the CPU overclocked to 5 GHz on all cores. This result places the Blizzard 240 next to models such as the Be Quiet Darrock TF or the Noctua NH U12S. The ASA Blizzard 240 is a good all-in-one liquid CPU cooler, it has a good design and its build quality is good, however, there are plenty of shortcomings. First, the mounting system, for some reason, is made to be used by someone with four hands. It's simple, but not easy to work with as it lacks the proper mounting hardware to keep the backplate at the back of the motherboard and to easily align the mounting bars with the backplate. Second, the two 120mm fans do look good and are well made, however, for fans that are only spinning at 1800 RPM, these two are loud, really loud, and again, for no obvious reason. Speaking of noise, the pump is not silent at all, and with an open case system, you will get to hear it 24-7. Being a pump that uses a 3-pin connector for power means that lowering the voltage to lower its speed and thus noise might affect its reliability in the long term. 
The cooling performance is alright for a cooler of this size, however I suspect that the fans are underperforming and pairing the Blizzard 240 with better fans will result in a lower CPU temperature. All this being said, the Blizzard 240 is not a bad CPU cooler, it's just not competitive in the current market. Before it can be competitive, the mounting system needs to be improved and the fans needs to be quieter. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more and if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the subscriber star pages of this channel.